Today we're going to build a robot that walks. That's right, it's going to walk. It's not going to roll along the ground. We're not going to use wheels to travel. We're going to make something that can actually take steps and walk. We're going to see if you can walk to the target and then hit the target. And we're going to see who can do it the fastest. Here's some rules and tips. So, assuming that you've uh, already made your robot, you need to put it into a starting position where you want the legs to be. Sometimes it's with one leg in the air and the other one a little bit down, but you can decide where you want the starting position to be. The good thing about using individual motors like this, you can actually set the starting position. So let's just, I'm just gonna show you quickly. I'm gonna connect my robot and it says that my motors are plugged into CND, but there's also a little value there that shows you how far the wheels are turned. If I enlarge that, you can see that one motor at the moment is on 250 degrees and the other motor is 102 degrees. So it'll depend on how you've structured your robot. Your numbers will be completely different to mine. But if my robot is in a perfect standing position at the start like that, then I want it to start like that every single time. Okay, so I'm going to remember 250 for motor C and 102 for motor D. So I'm going to change it to C and make this 250. So it'll always start in that exact position. And the other one was 102, wasn't it? I remember that for later. So what you need to do when you're walking is to set a speed. Now, 
<laughs> if you go really fast, there's a chance your robot's going to fall over or just not walk very well at all. Sometimes slower steps are more accurate. So I recommend starting with a speed like 40%. You can change this number later if you like, um, but maybe start on 40 and see how that goes. And then you want the robot to actually start moving. So grab this block here and make that leg possibly turn for... I don't know, 50 rotations. That'll give it 50 steps. And that should be enough to get to the finish line. Okay, now once you've done that, you can duplicate all that by right clicking on it, or if it's on a tablet, hold, hold it down. And then your other leg is obviously port D. So we need to change all these to port D. Once you've changed all those to port D, you actually have to make the motors go the opposite way because they're a bit like having two movement motors, okay? Uh, when you've got movement motors, they actually spin in opposite directions because they're facing opposite ways. So remember to make sure that they're, they're facing opposite to each other, okay? If your robot's going backwards, you could change both of those later if you wanted to the opposite to the other way, okay? Remember, we had to make this one 102 degrees because that's our starting position, okay? And it's worthwhile, I mean, if you test your robot a few times, you might find that your starting position changes a bit. It's always good to check back here and make sure these numbers here match your code whenever you've got it in a starting position, okay? So that's all you really need to make it do about 50 steps and that hopefully will get you to the finish line. You can always change it to more if you want. Okay. If you press play down there, it'll actually run both these blocks at the same time. So your robot should walk if you've constructed it well enough. It is time to pause the project right here because we're about to look at the teacher setup. What does the teacher need to do? Well, basically you just need a couple of pieces of masking tape. I put these around 1.5 meters apart. I used my feet and measured five steps because my feet are about a foot long. Anyway, well, two pieces of masking tape, one for a start line, one for a finish line, and then the goal will be to start behind the line and try and get to the end and maybe knock over some sort of target which you can build. I've got these guys which are pretty cool, but it could be any target. It could even be a tower made out of Lego or something. So the goal is for the robot to walk and then knock over the target. And with all my lessons, you can scroll to the bottom and look in the description and find ways on how to score. There's lots of different ways to score that you might utilise for this activity. You could have one that um, involves the quickest time. There's also student assessment sheets and um, teacher assessment worksheets. You can check those out if you haven't already. They are pretty handy. Check in the description for those. And if you haven't yet... Um, you should check out some of my other videos on my channel to do with Lego Spike Prime. There's a lot of videos there, including this one, which is very popular.